Okay, so here we have Fusion 360, and when you're designing your tiny home, you really need two things in front of you. You need Fusion 360 open, and then you need your inspiration. Now, your inspiration should come from your sketch that you've done on paper. Mine's gonna come from this diagram that I've just stolen off the internet, okay? But all I'm gonna be using that for is to be getting the um, sizes to start my tiny home. Okay, so let's just run through what Fusion 360 is. It's a program that allows us to draw sketches and then make them into three dimensions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on my origin, which is this little light bulb here. So this little tree has all of the bits and pieces that belong to our Fusion 360 design. So if I click on this little drop down menu, I have the document setting. So in this case, mine's in millimeters, which is great. That's what I want it in. I've got different views that I can look at and I can create my own, but for us, that's not gonna be relevant. And then I've got the origin. So the origin is where in three dimensional space, my design is tied down to, okay? And you can see it's got these sort of three planes. The first thing I'm gonna do is save it. So I'm gonna go tiny home design. Now the great thing about Fusion 360 is it's going to keep a record of everything that I do, okay? I also have this view cube up here which allows me to change the views of my three dimensional design, okay? So I can look at it from multiple perspectives and then I can click that home and it takes me back to that sort of three dimensional view. So if I look at my design, I need to create a box that's 2,450 meters wide and then um, whatever this equals in length, okay? If I was to print this out, I would have a one to 50 scale. You need to design yours on Fusion 360 to be full scale. So if your paper is 33 times smaller, Fusion 360, the design needs to be 33 times bigger, okay? So it's gonna be full size. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a sketch. So I'm gonna hit create sketch, and it's gonna ask me in a second, which one of these planes do I wanna create that sketch on? So because I'm gonna be looking from a bird's eye view, I'm gonna be doing it on that base plane, and I'm gonna click that. I'm now gonna go up to click a rectangle. And this is a two point rectangle, which means I have to pick the first corner and the opposing corner to get my rectangle. And I'm gonna start it from this origin point. Okay, that way it's gonna be locked in. So I click once there, drag out, and click again. And it doesn't matter what those dimensions say because I'm gonna put those dimensions in after. So I'm just gonna click away. And you can see now I've got this rectangle. So now I'm gonna go up to sketch and I'm gonna go down to dimension, which is in one of these. Where is it? Can anyone see dimension? I can't find it. So I'm just gonna use the shortcut, which is D. Okay, D for dimension. I'm gonna click this edge here and then drag away without holding my mouse down or anything like that, just a single click, then drag out and click again. This is where I'm gonna put my dimension. So I'm gonna drag it all the way out here, click again, and I know that it is 2,450 millimeters. So I'm gonna write that in, 2,450 and I don't have to write millimeters because we remember that my document's already in millimeters. And I click, okay. And you can see it's got a hell of a lot bigger, okay? Now I've got to dimension this top one. D, click that one. And now I can type in what that one is. Now I've got to go back. And does anyone have a calculator that I can borrow? Thanks, Jacoby. So now I've got to go back and add all these numbers together, okay? All of these ones here are adding up and gonna be the full width of my tiny home or the full length of my tiny home. So I'm gonna go 700 plus 600 plus 
3,000 plus 730 plus 90 plus 2,200 and go equals. That equals 7,320. 7,320. Now I've got my rectangle, okay? Now if I look back at my design, you notice that I've got this walls going all around it. How thick does that wall have to be? I'd look at my design, you look at your design and work out how far that has to be. In my case, I'm gonna do approximately 70 millimeters. So there's this really cool function, this tool called offset. And what offset does is takes, say a square, or a line, and then moves it in, out, up, down, left, right, okay? So in this case, you can see our little box here, and it says, when we get one of these boxes, we always start from top to bottom. So it goes, select a sketch curve. So I'm gonna click this one. Now because chain selection's on, it's going to select every single side or line that's connected to it. If I took that off, it's only going to select one line, okay? But I'm gonna put chain selection on and it's gonna select everything. Then you'll notice I've got this little mover, okay? I can drag that in and offset by a certain amount, okay? And I'm gonna offset it by 70 millimeters, okay? Now, I've got this wall thickness going all the way around, okay? I can then work out what my other walls are and things like that. So for example, if I wanted to draw this shower section, I would notice that it is seven plus 600 millimeters in, okay? So one thing I could do is I could go, all right, I'm gonna draw another box somewhere here and the box is gonna be 885 wide um, by some amount deep, okay? And it looks to be almost a rectangle, almost a square, but a bit shorter. So I'm gonna make it 810 on the inside. So again, I've drawn my rectangle in some position, I'm gonna dimension it, and it was 885 wide. 885 wide, and it was almost a square, so I'm gonna dimension this one at about 800. And have a look. It might be a little bit too deep, so I can always go back and change that. Maybe it's 750, maybe 700. Now you wouldn't have this problem because you would actually have your design in front of you and you could look at it, okay? So now there's my um, shower and again, <clears throat> I can offset it, O for offset, click that and then come in and in this case, I want my wall length to be 50, okay. Now you can see it's still blue, okay? That's because I haven't told it its position relative to here. So I want it to be 1300 away from that far wall. So I'm gonna click this one, D for dimension, click, click, and then go, I want it 1300. And now my shower is in the right spot. Okay, we can keep working through our sketch and adding on all these components. But eventually, we're gonna wanna hit stop sketch and then we're going to want to build the walls. So I'm gonna hit create and an extrusion. Now the good thing about these is as you click the drop down menu, as you hover over each one, it tells you what it does, okay? So this one adds depth to a sketch profile or face and then moves it upwards. That's what I want. So I'm gonna click this wall 
And you see I'm starting from top to bottom. I'm going to start from my profile plane. I'm going to extend it. And I'm going to, at this stage, I've hit this home button so I can see it up and then move it upwards. Now, how high is mine going to be? I'm going to make mine about 3.8 meters high. Okay, so 3,800 high. And zoom out. With a Mac, it's a two finger pinch. And now, if I hold down shift and use two fingers, I can slide around it, and now I've got my tiny home walls. But you notice my sketch has disappeared. If I click this drop down menu, you can see my sketch, but the light bulb next to it has turned off. If I want to see my sketch again, I can turn that on. If this origin thing is annoying me, I can turn that off. If these walls are annoying me, I can turn them off. Okay? So now I might want to extrude. this face here. Now sometimes I have to zoom in a bit so I can click it, and now I want to extrude that up. How tall is my shower? Maybe it's um, two meters, two meters high. Is that a tall shower? I don't know. Okay, so here's my shower. And you can notice I've got body one and body two. Body one is my walls. So I'm going to right click and rename it. Oh, actually I do a click and then a second click and I'm gonna write walls. And I suggest you do the same so you don't get confused. Click, another click and write shower. Okay, so here's my shower and here's my walls. Now. I can actually right click my shower and go, what's the physical material? What would be the physical material of my shower? Yep, plastic or if I'm a little bit, you know, got a bit more money, I'm probably gonna go with glass, okay? So I'm gonna click glass here and then I'm going to drag glass onto that and now, I've got a glass shower, okay? Oh, it's actually, hang on a second, it's even made my walls glass, which is probably not what I want. So I'm gonna go um, and undo that. Let's turn that off, okay. So I should be able to just change the physical material of that one thing, but if not, I might be able to go appearance and drag glass onto just that shower. Now I've got like a, a blue glass shower. Okay, so there's my uh, glass shower, and it's got this nice blue, sort of transparent color. It doesn't look very good, but we can start, get all the basics done, and then we can start trying to make it better as we go. All right, so hopefully that is a good little thing to get you started, but basically we draw a sketch, and then we extrude from the sketch into our design. All right, and you just gotta have a play. You're gonna make mistakes, but you just uh, keep working, have a play, look for help. Now, if you do make a mistake, you can roll back here. For example, let's say in my original sketch that that shower isn't wide enough. Maybe I want it 900 wide. I can just go back in here, go 900, enter, stop the sketch, and now my shower's updated, okay? All right, I'm gonna leave it there, and then I'm gonna put this one on YouTube, and I'll put the link up on our Google Classroom, and you can watch it. Hopefully the sound's a bit better.